Welcome to video four of chapter nine. Continuing on in our hypothesis or significance test series here. And so in the last video we talked about our type one and type two errors. Type one error was when we rejected the null hypothesis, but we really shouldn't have. Uh, and the probability of making this type 1 error, we said in the previous video, was our alpha level, whatever that was stated to be in the problem, whether it was 5%, 10%, 1%, or some other percent, but 1, 5, and 10 were the common uh, alpha levels, if you will. And our type 2 error was when we failed to reject the null hypothesis, but we really should have rejected it. Okay. And so again, the way that I kept those two things straight was I'm always thinking in a hypothesis test that I really want to reject the null hypothesis. And so if that's the one thing that I'm thinking that I need to accomplish <clears throat> in my hypothesis test, then rejecting the null should be my first priority. And so that would be my type one error. Now our type two error uh, occurs when you fail to reject the null, but we really should have rejected it. And that's a bad thing. Remember in our court case that we talked about in video three, that's when we um, found a guilty person not guilty. And that's bad for everybody. So the complement of a type two error is called power. And power is when we do what we want to do, when we reject the null hypothesis, and it really was the right decision to make. Okay, so we have type one error and type two errors. And then the complement of a type two error is called power. Now, the ways to increase the power, the ways to increase the probability that you reject an null hypothesis and it was really the right decision to make, that we find a guilty person guilty, is we can, and this is the best way to do it, is to increase your sample size. Um, think of your sample size as basically the evidence in a court case. And if you increase your evidence, if you have more evidence or if you have stronger evidence, if you're like, hey, I got some DNA here with the defendant's uh, guilt or um, bloody fingerprints or, you know, I've got the murder weapon here with his fingerprints on it and the victim's blood was on his clothing. Like, oh man, this is going to be a slam dunk case here to reject the null hypothesis. And we can feel pretty confident that we are making the right decision here of finding the defendant guilty. So increasing your sample size will help accomplish to increase the power, the probability uh, that you won't make a type two error. Now the kind of cheaters way here is to just increase your alpha level. So if we want to reject the null hypothesis, then all we have to do is set the alpha level so high that no matter almost what p-value we get, we're going to go, oh, well, yeah, our p-value is 20%. Uh, but we set our alpha level to be 30%. Like, that's a really high alpha value to draw on the sand there. Uh, but technically, that is a way that you could increase your power, that you reject an null hypothesis uh, more easily. So again, if you're ever asked um, ways to increase the probability of power, you want to tell me increase the sample size. The other way that you could do it is also to increase your alpha level. All right, so let's take a look at an example here. In the past, the mean score of the seniors at South High on the ACT College Entrix exam has been 20. This year, a special prep course is offered and all 53 seniors planning to take the ACT test enroll in the course. The principal believes that the new course will improve the student's ACT score. A hypothesis was, found, was performed at the alpha equals 0.01 level and found the power to be 68%. So first thing you might be asking me is, how did they get this 68% power? And if you remember in video three, when we talked about what the probability of a type two error was, the probability of a type two error was this beta level. And you will not have to know how to directly calculate it. It is too kind of advanced for a uh, beginning stats course. So the same thing is going to be true with power. You are just going to have to be told uh, what the power probability is or what the type 2 probability is. But just to remind you, there was a relationship between power and type 2 error, that they are complements of each other. 
So that means that a type 2 error plus power is going to be 100%. All right, so let's write hypotheses here. So we'll have our null hypothesis, we'll have our alternate hypothesis. And this is a, what, a mean problem here. We're looking at the mean SAT, or not SAT, ACT scores. Um, and so in the past it has been 20, so we'll state, hey, things are the way that they've been in the past. The mean score is still 20. But we're hoping that this prep course will cause an increase in scores, that it will help improve students ACT scores. So we're hoping this prep course will cause our scores to exceed what it has been in the what it has been in the past at 20. So mu will represent our mean ACT score. And then more specifically for students at South High School. So the null hypothesis will say still 20 nothing's changed versus hey this course really has helped them now there is a chance that the course maybe has an opposite effect and it really makes their scores go down but we are looking to see hopefully that their scores go up so describe a type 1 and type 2 error in this situation all right so our type 1 error remember that's when we reject the null hypothesis but we really shouldn't have so one way to put it is that we reject the 20, that the mean is 20, but really it's still 20. So we think that this program has helped out when in fact it hasn't helped out. So that's what I've got here. We believe the mean SAT score increased when in fact it stayed the same. That there was really no difference in these kids taking this prep course or not taking this prep course. For a type two error, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, but we really should have rejected it. So one way of looking at it uh, is that we think that the mean SAT score, it's still 20, but really it went up. So we don't think that the prep course helped out at all, but it really did help. Or another way of putting it, that we believe the mean ACT score stayed the same when it, in fact it really increased. Okay. Um, in terms of these two that I have here, I usually go and write mine like these second ways. I always like to talk about what I believe is happening when in fact this is what's really happening. Okay, So we believe is what is based on uh, your decision for the null hypothesis. Did you reject it or did you fail to reject it? When in fact is what we should have done instead. We shouldn't have rejected it or we should have rejected it. All right, explain what the power of 68% means in this situation. So again, power just means the probability that we reject the null hypothesis and it was the correct decision to make. And that's just another definition that you're going to have to store in your brain uh, for future reference. So again, I'm just basically stating what that definition was, the probability that we reject the null hypothesis and it was the correct decision to make that there is a 68% chance that that will occur. And again, don't fret about how did I get this 68%? How do we calculate that number? Don't worry about it. Part D, calculate the probability of a type one and type two error. Well, a type one error was just our alpha value. And let me jump back here. We were told here that the alpha value was 1%. So we have a 1% chance of making a type one error that we reject the null hypothesis, but we really shouldn't have. Now, again, the type 2 error is directly related to power, and they are direct complements of each other. So if we take 1 minus our power probability, then that will give us our type 2 probability. So we have a 32% chance of making a type 2 error, and a 68% chance of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. And how could we increase the power of our test? Again, the main way to do it, the correct way, would just be to increase your sample size, but the cheater's way, I'll call it, is just to increase your alpha level. You know, instead of it being 1%, let's make rejecting the null hypothesis easier. Let's make it 5%. Let's make it 10%. Um, and this is where potentially some people could be rather deceiving and set a rather high alpha level just to reject the null hypothesis and make it look like uh, that their study or their whatever they're trying to test is really significant. All right, and that is 
all for video four. Again, the main ideas, uh, type two error and power are complements of each other. You do not have to worry about how the type two error or the power probabilities are calculated. The only thing that you will need to know uh, that is just the type one error is the alpha level, which is typically given to you. And that's all for video four.